Dating can be awesome and it can also be terrible. If you're a single guy out there and you're dating a woman right now, I'd highly advise you not to keep anything that you really treasure or value because you never know when you're gonna break up and you don't know if you're gonna get it back. I was dating a girl for about six years and I went to farrier school, which is how to do horseshoeing and hoof trimming. And towards the end of our relationship, I ended up trimming some of her horse's hooves and I left all my horse trimming gear in the back of her car. Now this was about a thousand dollars worth of top of the line equipment. I'm talking GE, really nice set of chaps, a uh, hoof stand that I spent uh, probably more than I should have on. And I asked for it back once or twice, but she never responded and it's not really worth the aggravation and stress and heartache to go back and try and retrieve it through the court system. So I'm just cutting my losses and that's pretty much all you can do. I mean, yeah, you could go through a legal sy system, but is it really worth it? Eh. So what I'm doing today is I need to make a hoof stand. And, and for those of you that don't know, when you're trimming up horse's feet, uh, a hoof stand is basically like a jack stand for the horse's hoof, and you can rest it on there uh, with the foot forward, and then there's also a cradle device so you can rest it backwards. I, I don't really use the cradle portion, but I do use um, the portion of a hoof stand where you rest the hoof on facing forward, and that's just easier for rasping down on a horse's foot. So that's what I need to make today. Before I start this project, I already have a good idea of what I'm going to do here. I'll explain that in a minute, but I need to go over to my patient for today and I got to take a measurement. I'm going to be working on a mule and I'm designing this stand so it's adjustable so I can adjust it for the height of a mule's hoof as well as a horse. So I'm familiar with two ways to make a stable base for a hoof stand. One of them is where you go to like a farming supply store and you buy a disc that goes on the back of a tractor implement and you lay that flat on, flat on the ground and then you build up your hoof stand from there. The other way is in which you basically make a tripod and that's what I'm doing. So. The idea behind this is in the center of this tripod that I'm creating, it's going to be slightly raised, so all three points are always going to have contact with the ground and the center is going to be slightly raised a little bit. For making this base, I'm using an old plow blade. So this is going to be a very crude project. Uh, the way I'm going to cut this, I'm going to take an oxyacetylene torch and cut rough cut there. And for welding, I'm thinking about taking the arc welder out on this project, which I don't have a lot of experience running and I'm not very skilled at, but not a lot of people are going to see this. And as long as it holds together all right, we'll be doing fine. some pretty good cuts there's a bit of a curve in that because I intentionally did it that way but not a bad cut so one other thing I'm gonna do before I let this cool down completely is I'm gonna put a little bit of a bend on this triangular tip and what that's going to do is when I assemble this all together um, if I bend that tip a little bit I'll put something underneath that triangular tip to raise it up off the ground and that way I have a flat surface, or fairly flat surface, to weld on my mounting post. And it's, it's all going to come together. You're just going to have to trust me on this one. As you can see what the bend did is it allowed me to raise this up like I was trying to explain earlier 
So that way we only have three points of contact. That way this thing will always be stable. And I think this is going to be a perfect task for the arc welder. Okay, I'm feeling pretty confident about this. I ran a couple practice beads and then I tacked it up. And I think we're going to be pretty good. Alright, so for these welds I'm going to be using my Hobart Stickmate LX235. I'm going to be welding 7014 rods at 120 amps DC DC positive electrode. So let's give this a shot, see how it goes. All right, so we got the stand halfway fabbed up. I'd, I'd say we're about halfway there. So again, the idea behind this is when you put the horse's hoof right here, you always want to keep at least one foot on the stand. That way, you know, if the horse pulls back on his hoof a little bit, it's, the stand will be less likely to tip over. But this thing's really stable. It's, it's pretty heavy, so we're definitely on our way. Welds came out all right. I did weld both sides. I still got some more learning to do when it comes to welding, but not bad. One inch square tubing. Uh, the total height of this right now is this is 10 inches uh, from the ground up because there's a little space in the bottom right there. About two inches down there and then this one inch square tubing is about 10 inches high. So the next piece that I'm working on is the piece that goes in that one inch square tubing and it's just a piece of round rod which I actually had to machine down somewhat square uh, you can't really see it too much from the top because the squaring starts down along here but that was just so that it would fit nice and tight in that one inch square tubing but as you can see I had to make a jig in order to weld this hoof rest piece on uh, as level as possible so everything's all squared away just gotta lay a beetle weld around there and what I decided to use for the hoof rest pad is a piece of old rasp. Now I did steal this idea from uh, when I was in horseshoeing school in Indiana. They made a homemade stand and they took a piece of rasp and it worked out really well. So what you do, uh, I'm, I cut out a two inch piece section of rasp and then I'm going to take a grinder and grind the sharp edges off this rasp down so it won't uh, hurt the hoof at all or it won't puncture the hoof at all but it, it will be a nice grippy surface so the hoof will be less likely to slot around. So I'll weld that up, we'll put it together, and then we have one or two things to do left.
You know how the old saying goes, measure twice, cut once? I think there should be a saying when it comes to welding, there probably is, but check twice before you weld, because I actually welded this piece of file on the wrong end of this dowel. It was supposed to be welded on the round end that isn't machined. You can see it's flat machined on the, uh, the four, four sides up here. So, oh well, not a big deal. I just gotta grind this down until it fits in the one inch square tubing. Minor setback. Alright, there's just one more thing that I'd like to do with this, and this feature is going to have two purposes. One, it's going to just secure this hoof stand rod a little bit more, and also it's hopefully going to be able to make this adjustable height-wise because it already goes up and down in the channel. I just need a way to lock it in into position. So what I'm planning on doing is I have a nut and a piece of threaded rod, so i got to cut out a hole in this one-inch square tubing, weld the nut on, and then with my piece of threaded rod, I've seen this done before um, on the front of a gooseneck hitch. Goose, gooseneck. A gooseneck. Gooseneck. Yes, it's... Okay. I've seen this done once before on the head of a gooseneck trailer. And the bolts that screw into the adjustable head on a gooseneck trailer, what they did for those bolts is they stuck the bolt in a drill press and they bored out the center of the bolt and they kind of created a sharp edge on the lip of the bolt if that makes sense which I'll, I'll do this and it'll make sense in a little while and I think the idea behind that is when you twist the bolt in there then it's gonna latch on and kind of jab into and lock on uh, whatever you're trying to secure so I think that's gonna do a better job at keeping this from moving up and down as opposed to me doing nothing with this so yeah let me get started cut a hole in there weld that bolt on there and uh... We'll go to the drill press and countersink this head a little bit and go from there All right, and here's finished product. I'm really happy with how it came out. It's really strong. It'll do its purpose just fine. A couple thoughts though. The reason I positioned the rasp head in this orientation is because I always want the horse to put its hoof on in this direction. So that way uh, it has this leg right here to take most of that back pull as opposed to if I was doing it on this side, if this makes sense, it'd be more likely to tip over. Also, because I want the horse to always put his hoof on from this direction, I decided to put this screw on in the back. So God forbid if the horse were to uh, take his hoof off there and accidentally just let it down nice and easy, uh, if I have the, the horse positioned in this way, then he won't be able to catch on that bolt in the back. So this thing is adjustable. Let me put the camera down real quick. And I'll raise this thing up. And that bolt does a really nice job of digging in there. And let me put some weight on here. Putting pretty much my whole body weight on here and this thing is not moving so so that threaded rod with the machined core does an excellent job of digging in and I should have no problem putting a horse's weight on this thing and not having it slide down so